Halo Magnum has made its debut in Destiny 2, albeit in an unofficial capacity, in the form of the Forerunner. So this one is a hard-hitting, high-caliber sidearm that nods back to Bungie's Halo days and the Master Chief, and is the perfect celebration exotic for Bungie's 30th anniversary. Good news as well, it's free for all players, so if you didn't purchase the 30th anniversary pack, well don't worry, you can get it too. Well today I'm going to look at the weapon, its stats, how to get it, plus the catalyst as well, and also check out the special lore tab. Well if you're new around here or find this useful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below for all the latest Destiny 2 content, and turn on notifications by hitting that bell. And roughly 98% of viewers who watch this week in video games aren't subscribed, so subscribe today and never miss an update. Well, before we go into how to get the weapon, let's have a look at the Forerunner itself. So this one is an exotic kinetic sidearm, and it comes with some really interesting perks. So we've got full stop. So this one is an oversized sidearm with extended range and heavy caliber rounds. Fires full auto with an increased rate of fire and deals increased precision damage to unshielded targets. We also have pace yourself, so tapping the trigger gives this weapon less recoil and improves the accuracy. So looking at the stats, we've got 35 for impact, 100 for range, 73 for stability, 64 for handling, 82 for reload speed. It's a 200 rounds per minute sidearm with 15 in the magazine. So this one packs a real punch and it's really, really good in PvE and also in PvP too. Well, next up, let's have a look at how to get the Forerunner in Destiny 2. So step one, you want to complete Dares of Eternity. So when you first boot up Destiny 2 after the 30th anniversary drop, you get sent directly to Dares of Eternity by Zur, and what you want to do is just run through the activity and afterwards go to Zur's treasure hoard, and that is selectable from the director under Eternity, speak to Zur, open a chest, and then it's on to the next step. Well, step two, talk to Zur again, and then Zur is going to have a quest for you called the Magnum Opus. So while you're here, pick up the Zur bounties as well, as these are going to help you level up at Zur, which is going to come in handy for a later step of the quest. Pick up all the available bounties, and if you've got enough glimmer, I would pick up all the repeatable bounties too, and then you can level up as quickly as possible. Basically, you're aiming to get to rank 4 as fast as you can, and this is going to save you time later. So for step 3, you want to collect strange coins. So yes, strange coins are a throwback to Destiny 1, so we could use strange coins back then for an extra chance and exotic drop. You'd basically consume a strange coin before a boss battle and get an increased chance for an exotic drop. So you can get strange coins from the end of Dares of Eternity. You can also get them from playlist activities like Strikes, Crucible, Gambit, plus also public events as well. So if you want to do this quickly, then public events may be the best way forward, but for those with the 30th anniversary pack, you do get a bundle of rewards which gives you a bunch of strange coins. But for me, I ran Dares of Eternity until I had enough coins, and you need to collect seven in total. So step four, you want to complete Star Horse Bounties, that's right, Star Horse Bounties. So Star Horse is one of the vendors related to the Nine, the mysterious force in control of Zur. So for this step of the quest, you need to complete three Star Horse Bounties, and you can only pick up one at a time, and they do cost strange coins. So the daily bounties are much quicker than the weekly ones, so I would recommend doing those. So for me, I had three bounties. I'd get pulse rifle kills, get shotgun kills, and then also get trace rifle kills, that took me about three runs of Dares of Eternity. So step five, you want to buy the strange key from Zur. So to be able to buy the strange key from Zur, you need to be at rank four at Zur. And you can see your rank by talking to him in the top right hand corner of the screen. So buy the strange key from Zur and then turn around and look for a marker on the screen, letting you know where to go in the shape of a white diamond. So for step six, you want to use the strange key so you're going to be teleported into the Dares of Eternity, although this time there's nothing to fight. So at first, it seems like there's nothing here, but what you want to do is go forward and to the right and you'll see a collection of small rocks. So head towards the rocks and you'll be able to use the key, and then you'll see a notification that a door is opening somewhere ahead, and you want to head up in that direction. So you want to go through a short platforming section. It is going to be dark. You are going to get your torch out here. But what you can do here is follow along on screen, and I'll meet you at the cryopod.
So hopefully you successfully made your way through the maze and you've ended up at a cryopod. So this is a massive callback to the Master Chief from Halo. And to be honest, I think it's absolutely brilliant. It's a master stroke from Bungie. So what you want to do is open the cryopod and get the broken weapon. And then for the next step, you're going to need to take that to the gunsmith. So for step seven, speak to Banshee44. So head back to the tower and speak to Banshee44 and he's going to give you the Forerunner exotic sidearm. So once again, there is a big callback here to the Master Chief from Halo. You now officially, there isn't a crossover between Halo and Destiny, but Bungie has done its best to include some iconic weapons, armor and other secrets from Halo in the Bungie 30th anniversary. Well, they had to do it basically, given they created the five original Halo games and in my opinion, probably the best Halo games out there. So once you've got the weapon, head into your preferred activity and give the Forerunner a spin. Well, next up, let's have a look at how to get the Forerunner Catalyst in Destiny 2. So to get the Catalyst, you are going to need to get to rank 16 at Zur. So to get to rank 16 fast, so you want to complete all the Zur daily bounties and also pick up the repeatable bounties too. It's going to take a little bit of time to get to rank 16. But just make sure you're picking up the bounties and every day at reset, just keep picking up more bounties and do them until you get to rank 16. Well, next up, let's have a look at what the Forerunner Catalyst does. So as per normal, the Catalyst creates orbs, but the really cool new perk is called the Rock. So after a final blow with the weapon, your secondary fire can be activated to consume some ammo reserves, turning your next grenade into a frag grenade. This essentially turns your grenade into the grenade from Halo, plus allows you to grenade jump, which can be seen in the trailer. Now, it's another great callback to Bungie's Halo days. Well, finally today, I'd like to check out the lore tab. I think this is one of the best lore tabs I've ever read in Destiny 2, and I just wanted to read it out to you, so I think it's really, really special. This is basically an ode to Master Chief from Bungie in 2021. So we've got Forerunner lore, a new chapter for an old legend. Banshee44 considered the relic on his workbench and the questions in his mind, and one stood out above the rest. Who were you meant for? The form of the weapon suggested an oversized sidearm, a secondary weapon for giant's hands. The function presented more so as an anti-material rifle. Looks to be 12.7 millimeters. It's like they were making a hand cannon, but didn't yet know it. Banshee wondered further about the warrior who could wield such a thing. His attention drifted momentarily, drawn by Shax's voice booming nearby. Huh, yeah, a titan, maybe, and a big one too. The weapon was laced with fractures from a life of fire and a sleep of ice, and perhaps other, more exotic stresses. Banshee wished he could have heard the relic's voice, but he knew from an earlier examination that it had fired its last round. And what a last round it must have been. The guardian who brought it to him might be willing to try a shot, untroubled by the risk of rapid unplanned dismantle, but Banshee knew it wouldn't last through a single magazine. Beside the relic lay a stripped down breech light. He would adapt it for a larger round, custom casings and a handguard, sensorium link scope. He had other ideas he'd like to try as well. It would be an homage, an offering to the creators of the original relic, a legacy. And with that satisfying thought in mind, the gunsmith went to work. Well, that is absolutely fantastic lore there. Almost a little tear in my eye there from reading that lore. Really, really good stuff. I'm a, I'm a massive fan of the original Halo games and just getting the Forerunner in my hands really, really brings back some good memories. But let me know down in the comments what you think of the Forerunner. Let me know what you think of the perks and also let me know what you think about that lore. Well, that is it for this guide for how to get the Forerunner in Destiny 2. And as always, thank you so much for watching. For more Destiny 2 content like this, hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe to This Week in Video Games. If you want to join the community, check out the Discord link in the description, or you can follow me on Twitter at TWIVG Podcast. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful, liking and sharing the video would really help me out. Otherwise, check out the other videos on the channel. Thanks again. I'll see you soon.